I mean, there's so many different Jan ideas in this picture. January 12th, 2013, a longtime friend uh, uh, and uh, fellow congregant at Congregation 8 Zor, Seattle's Jewish Renewal Denomination Synagogue, uh, visiting and uh, we're looking at uh, uh, an Under the Wings of God drawing, I believe from 1999, called Hitler's Yo-Yo, Zissel, the Street Musician, and Dietrich Bonhoeffer with Honorary Horns. And David uh, has some uh, interesting uh, thoughts about, especially about my composition, is that correct? Oh, sure, the composition, but just the idea of putting all these different things together. So like, for example... I'm just going to tell the audience here, David's a longtime photographer and um, multimedia artist, videographer, is also currently getting his MFA in uh, photography, is that right? Yeah. At a uh, Goddard College at Port Townsend, Washington. Okay, you're on. Yeah. So, the, to 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 a lot of people, I think that the, any one of these four pieces would be a outstanding image on its own. The Hitler with the yo-yo, which basically are symbols of his control over and oppression of Jews. His head being another well, symbol of oppression of Jews. Not necessarily. We've got, well, I guess in a well, way. Well, this represents Judaism and the right. congregation, and right. it's dangling from a yo-yo at that's, the end of his Heil Hitler. That's true. So, okay. I mean, it's yeah. clearly, sure. it's, it's clearly talking about his anti-Semitism, uh -huh. his attempt to control and destroy Judaism. Mm -hmm. So if you got rid of the chicken and you just had this picture with all this nice white space up here mm -hmm. and him jammed against that side of the frame, uh -huh. that's a, that's a great comic piece. I mean, that's a, that's a graphic, you know, like, like his name was Hartfield, who would draw the anti-Nazi Right, pieces. the collage artist of the 1930s. He didn't have a lot in the there. 40s, he had some yeah. black and white drawings and he showed what he wanted to show. Here's Hitler, uh -huh. here's what he's doing. No BS, right? That's what this kind of does. You might, you might shift things around a bit, I don't know, but that, that's uh -huh. an image by itself. Interesting. So then you've got the chicken, which is an image by itself, which you say let's, that you copied see, from a book. Let's see, uh, yeah, let's see uh, we'll it by itself. I'm just curious to okay. see. Comes up a bit of this. Uh huh. It's a good graphic image, Very so to speak. Very good graphic image. Uh huh. And it holds its own. It would probably hold the frame as well, the entire composition. Okay. And then, and I mean, naturally, this person over here, like you said, this is from a very stunning photograph. That was child. Bonhoeffer, when he was a child, he was the uh, uh, leader of the Confessing Church in Nazi Germany, resisted the uh, Nazi uh, party government and so on, and he uh, was executed two or three weeks before the war ended for his uh, having been um, implicated in the... Uh, Dragnet of people who were new or participatory and so on with the second bombing attempt on Hitler's life in 1944. So you think this works as a piece by itself? Well, this one this one works as a piece by itself on a lot of levels because uh -huh. there's, there, you have really here the makings of starting your own symbolic language, like I was talking about with Christian before with Miro and the, the things that he repeats over and over again, the motifs uh -huh. that he uses again and again. This With you it's been the wings, but that's mm -hmm. very conscious. This is more unconscious. Uh -huh. is this fact that there's this comical I've aspect to it of this, that basically this is a gag. I've this is a gag arrow. I've never looked at this this direction before. Oh, yeah, but you have Ever. to. I never, I'd you always looked to. at it like this, the way it appears in the drawing. <laughs> you have I to never look have. Because, look, and then you look at this kid's expression. This is a beautiful expression, with uh -huh. full of sort of a sort of minimum of angst, a little bit of sadness, hmm. but also just kind of a deadpan to him, like he's hmm. just sort of avoiding all that. Hmm. I, there's just makes a lot of, going when on. When you say right that, here. it makes me think of like Buster Keaton. Or <laughs> exactly. Okay. And then that, that's, Zissel. That, well, the Zissel, I'm not responding to as much. But you could probably make the same argument that Zissel could work by oh, himself. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, would you want me to tr face that way and look at it in the direction I normally wouldn't look at it? Yeah, oh, sure. See what you think. I mean, that's an active image. Yeah. Like so. Uh huh. This is like how how it is, except it's in black and white. And the photo uh, that I uh, did my drawing from, you know, is a source of artistic inspiration. Because of without the wing in the photo, in the book image before my eyes. The most interesting thing to hear me right away to me, it's is much just, more interesting upside down. Is though. this green? The f wing. The, this this very striking spring color uh -huh. compared to the blue and the red here. Uh -huh. That really stands out to uh -huh. me. It, the, uh, most interesting thing to me you've said is the fact that is how you've um, 
tied together all these disparate. You're the one that tied. <laughs> I know, but I know. I you just put I, them all in here. I just I wouldn't have done it. I just I did it. I don't think about it. I do it. It's right. what when I was in undergraduate school student many years ago, 40 years ago at Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, I read a book called by the late uh, English art historian named Herbert Reed. Sir Herbert Reed. The book was called To Hell with Culture. <laughs> and I remember, I remember distinctly that he wrote about something which, I, which, which struck my fancy because I've never forgotten it, like all these years later. Um, he said there was a magic to making art, you know, whether it's like Stravinsky composing The Rite of Spring, uh, Dostoevsky or cave painters in Lasso and the Pyrenees, you know, between Spain and France, there's a magic to it. And I've always, people ask me, how do you come up with this stuff? And I say, and audiences, you know, because I've been guest teaching for 18 years now in schools and stuff, universities, it just happens, you do it. So I, but it just happened. I can't explain to you why all these things are here. But you're, you actually, as the outside observer, have put together a kind of a methodical thread and connection between each of these in a way that I'd never thought of. Did I connect them? You did. Uh, before how, we how? began filming this, you were chatting about it. Well, there's the obvious Jewish theme, except right. for the chicken, except Jews eat chickens. Well, chicken, I wouldn't know. Jew, Jews in Eastern Europe, um, were many of them were poor. Mm -hmm. And just like poor people worldwide, chicken is the, is yeah. the meat of poor people throughout the world. It has been, I guess, through much of the uh, 20th century and into this century now. Right. Um, and that's a very, per you know, you know that information, but it's most not, viewers it's, won't. I but, kind of related to it, but I wasn't absolutely But it sure. wasn't just the fact that there were many um, impoverished Jews, like, let's say, like in, in Eastern Europe, Poland, Lithuania, Ukraine, Russia, and so on. Uh, wealthy Jews in in cities uh, like in, in Warsaw, Berlin, wherever Paris might have eaten chicken. Also, sure. chicken was a very popular food. Yeah, it still is, and it still is. So we grew, I, I, we grew up. I grew up eating chicken in the post-war era, nineteen fifties and sixties. You know, so to me, I, I think of chicken both as a Jewish cuisine, but as a world cuisine. Mm -hmm. So to me, it fits. But what is the world cuisine? have to do with the world but mass it's, murder. It's a Jewish cuisine. Jews enjoy chicken. And my, you know, my, uh, my mother's family, there was, um, you know, my, my mother and her brother, who recently died when he was a boy around 19, uh, let's see, he was born in uh, 1913, I think. Um, when he was like 12, it would have been 1925. They had, he had a, my grandmother had chickens. She killed one every now and then, and he had a pet chicken just like my mother did. So chickens and chicken lore. Well, and the whole story would have with my grandmother killing my uncle's pet chicken by mistake and confessing oh, to him no. <laughs> decades later in the 1950s. Well, it fits to me. So I can make really a correlation in personal. lots of different ways. Yeah. It's a very personal late motif. It's yeah. It's a very personal late motif. So. Few more seconds here, and then. Uh, so you, and another, we can interpret this in a very simplistic way. Sure. The game that Lenny Bruce used to play. Okay. Jewish goyish, right? Remember that game he used to play? They no. would look at something like a, a box of raisins. Jewish or goyish? Jewish. Box of cornflakes. Goyish, right? So I can look at your painting and I can say Jewish, goyish, Jewish, goyish, Jewish, Jewish, Jewish. With the goyish arrow. <laughs> uh, uh, interesting. I don't know so what there's audience. There's this dichotomy of Jewish goyish. I don't know what um, what some audience viewers are going to think of this uh, this latter part of the film here, but uh, <laughs> it's there. He addressed it, uh, and uh, I'll leave it, leave it at that. Um, I think I've seen that. Uh, there's this large book of Jewish humor, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's mentioned in there. Oh, sure yeah. Thank you, uh, David Sokol. Good luck with your MFA <laughs> studies and look forward to seeing your thesis exhibit. Take care, everybody. Thanks.